Mina, Claude Bonnois, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. We're looking at Psalm 17 again, and again, there's pretty much a lot of stuff in every single psalm I could draw out. I'm just, I'm like, there's so much in just the psalms in general. Every single verse seems to be a, a little bit of a treasure trove. Just revisiting the psalms again, it, it reminds me, I'm not the kind of guy who reads a psalm a day and a proverb a day. I just read a chapter a day, and I just go from Genesis to Revelation. That's my personal reading style, but I can see why some people really do like to be in the psalms. Not that that was the point, but just a reflection. What I'm going to say today is a reflection on this psalm, and that was kind of my reflection on the psalms I've read so far in general. This is going to be Psalm 17, verses 3 through 5. This is, once again, a prayer of David. So let's go into it. You have tested my heart. You have visited me in the night. You have tried me and have found nothing. I have purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Concerning the works of men, by the word of your lips, I have kept away from the paths of the destroyer. Uphold my steps in your paths that my footsteps may not slip. I can't think of a single preacher, myself included. I don't know if I... I'm a YouTube preacher. Does that count? <laughs> Um, there's not a single preacher who'd look, who'd look to God and say to their congregation, you know, God's tested me, I've looked in my heart, He's, He has tried me, I've looked at myself, and nothing's been found. No one would claim that. The, the, the message of the gospel of Jesus is we're all sinners, we all need His help, we all need to repent. No one would claim this. But it's in the Bible, right? So it's true, right? And I don't doubt that it's true, but I would bet money. I don't know the place. I don't know the time and place when Psalm 17 was written. I would bet money. It's before David committed adultery with Uriah's wife and then had Uriah killed in battle by sending him to the front lines and then having him abandoned. Yes, David was guilty of adultery, and um, by what? by cooperation, by command, I don't know, I'm sure there's some legal term for it, but he was guilty of murder. He was guilty of those two things. God forgave him. But at the same time, he was guilty of those two things. Uh, that prayer to uphold my steps in your paths and my footsteps may not slip. Whew. I'm going to assume God did his part. David sure as heck did not do his. And this sounds like a rather harsh criticism of Psalm 17, but I can't help but, and David has said this in several other psalms, I can't help but think these psalms had to have been written before that time. There's no way David could say that about himself after he fell as far as he did. Nonetheless, it may, he at one point in his life did say it. And I wonder if after you've committed sins like he committed, I haven't, thank God, but Uphold my steps in your paths that my footsteps may not slip. Considering how badly David did slip, it just makes me want to watch my own steps that much more. And he just, just I've shared some of the problems that I have with you guys. I couldn't even say what's in verse 3 and 4. It just kind of makes me wonder, <laughs> honestly, how accurate is this? Is this something one can say after they've been, after they've had their sins forgiven? Or is this something that someone says with a little bit of pride in their heart before they've experienced a major fall? I wonder about that. Because, yes, this is definitely scripture, this is definitely the word of God, but it was definitely written by a man. David claims the penmanship of this psalm. So I wonder what state he was in when he wrote this. Just some of the questions that I have, um, some of the things that I think through. I want to share all my thoughts with you guys on this YouTube channel. Some things you probably won't hear from a pulpit anywhere. Preachers don't tend to invite a ton of questions upon their congregations, whereas I want to, I want to question as much as possible, because I think that's the best way to learn as much as possible. So let me, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, and thank you very much for watching this video. I do believe from the bottom of my heart that God can forgive any sin and that God can restore to a state of innocence. I just quite, so this can be true even after what David did. Like his heart could be tested and nothing could be found because of God's forgiveness. 
but because of his own righteousness, because he's just maintained such, such an amazing piety? No. And even if so, that piety definitely fell away. So thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I love you, and God bless.